For the last seven or eight years, Ocean Safety has been working closely with Skip Novak. For those of you who don't know Skip, he is an ex Whitbread skipper and is actually prom probably one of the world's greatest authorities in sailing in high latitudes and everything that entails. Safety in the Southern Ocean is absolutely key. And on his last trip to the Southern Ocean, we gave him a para anchor to take down there and illustrate how using a parachute anchor can significantly improve your safety in high latitudes, in big winds and big waves. Skip has put together a number of videos where he actually deploys a para anchor in the Southern Ocean. And the videos that follow will hopefully give you some idea as to how these things can make your, your sailing life, especially if you're blue water sailing, much, much safer. We're on board Pelagic Australis on our way back from South Georgia to the Falkland Islands and we're going to have a little experiment today. Um, right now we're hove to with a back staysail, helm lashed to windward, something I do quite often if uh, heavy weather on the wind and we can't make headway to where we're going. Very comfortable way to sail and very safe. On the other hand, if you were on a lee shore and you were being swept into the land, you may want to deploy a sea anchor. Now I've never done this before so it's a first for me. And, uh, sea anchor will have less leeway than heaving two. Heaving, heaving two in a big storm you could be making two knots backwards which is fine if you've got sea room. Uh, if you have a problem with, uh, with uh, um, sea room, a uh, para anchor could be a solution but there are caveats to it as you'll see. So we're gonna go uh, forward and uh, deploy this thing and it's very light weather. I mean uh, this is a good way to demonstrate it. Obviously um, you wouldn't be heaving two in this condition or deploying a sea, sea anchor, but having said all that, because a sea anchor is a bit more complex than heaving two, which is really quick, it's not a bad idea to think about deploying a sea anchor before the heavy weather hits in a condition like this and wait for the storm to build, get yourself sorted, get all your lines ready, sort out your chafe gear issues on the bow, and just wait for the blow to come on. Okay, we're getting ready to uh, deploy this thing. Now keep in mind this is a, quite a heavy boat. It's a 55 ton displacement vessel. Uh, the para anchor I can sort of just lift by myself but we're going to use two people to uh, throw it over the side and how this works is the front of the para anchor has a huge big swivel here attached to a very heavy cable that's your anchor line going up through a fair lead on the bow back to ideally back to a winch because you have to pay this out and control it as the boat comes up into the wind and there's going to be a lot of load on it of course and then Attached to the other end of the para anchor, which is the uh, the tackle end with the, the with the rope the ropes that open it out, is a bit of chain, a bit of line, 25 meters of polyester, attached to a big orange float, which in theory supports will support the weight of the para anchor when it's deflated for the recovery. And to get the whole thing back, that buoy is then attached to about 40 meters of polypropylene floating line attached to a small buoy and that's going to be a big target to snatch up with a boat hook as we motor towards the orange buoy and the recovery is quite tricky it's easy dumping it over the side quite difficult to get this thing back you don't want to cut it loose it's a bad meal for a sperm whale for sure Okay, we've got the uh, sea anchor deployed. We've got about uh, 40, 50 meters of line out. Uh, the boat is lying head to wind and head to sea as it should do. It definitely works for sure. We're making about uh, one point eight knots uh, leeway at the moment, uh, not bad. And now we're gonna try to do the recovery situation, which is a bit tricky. We made one slight mistake when we threw it over the side. The little float was, is not completely clear. Um, uh, I think it's got a wrap around the, uh, the drogue, so you can see the, how, how difficult this is to get all this correct 
Now imagine doing this in the height of a storm up on the foredeck with waves crashing over the foredeck and you're short-handed. Uh, not an easy maneuver. That's why I say again, uh, the idea is to, in this type of weather, get the thing out um, before the storm hits. You may have to wait 12, 15 hours for the gale to hit you and then pass through. So it could be a long wait. And then recovering, same story. You've got to wait till the wind goes down, the sea goes down to get this thing back on board, clear the propeller, clear the rudder. It's a lot of tackle, so there are risks to this whole game for sure. But, you know, if you're an extremist, the sea anchor definitely works, no doubt about it. You know, in the recovery, uh, what's going to happen? We're going to have, uh, if you can imagine, the storm has passed and you're in conditions sort of like this. You'd probably try to recover it, you know, in 15 to 20 knots of wind, sea going down. You have to have somebody on the wheel uh, with the engine on motoring towards the big orange buoy and try to go in between the little float and the orange buoy to snatch with a boat hook that floating line. Because the boat's so big, what we're going to do on this case is we're going to clip a Jenniker halyard onto a loop of line on the orange buoy where it's tied in and then one guy on the, ha on the Jenniker halyard on the coffee grinder raising it very quickly up to the top of the mast and snatching the whole lot up and out of the water and onto the foredeck. That's really the only way to do it on this boat. We did a dry test on this in South Georgia in flat water and the weight of that thing pulling it up over the lifelines is substantial and there are risks getting tangled up in the, the whole rig. So you, this halyard idea is a good idea. On a smaller boat you'd probably be 40 footer, 35 footer safe enough to haul it in by hand.